guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking all about the ever so popular micellar waters and why I personally don't use them. To be clear, the intention of today's video is not to try and convince you that micellar waters are bad or that you shouldn't use them, but hopefully the information I provide in today's video will just make you overall more informed when it comes to making decisions about your skincare, skincare habits, and uh, skincare product choices. What exactly is micellar water? Micellar water is a skincare cleansing product. It contains water as well as cleansing ingredients. The cleansing ingredients are typically a mild surfactant and as the name implies, micelles. In addition to those things, micellar waters also have hydrating or moisturizing ingredients like glycerin. Now, what exactly is a micelle? Well, a micelle is a spherical aggregate of surfactants. A surfactant is a molecule that has a water-loving head and it has these water-fearing, oil-loving tails. Now, a micelle is a spherical aggregate of surfactants in which the water-loving heads are all on the outside and the oil-loving, water-fearing tails are on the inside. The oil-loving tails are what it's gonna trap dirt, oil, cosmetics, debris, and the water-loving heads is what's gonna allow the product to rinse off or wipe off as the products claim. Micellar waters are popular, especially amongst makeup wearers, as a way to remove makeup. Originally, micellar waters gained popularity in France because in many areas of France, they have very hard water. Now I have a video going into detail about the effects of hard water on your skin and your skin barrier. As you will recall from that video, hard water has a lot of minerals in it that can leach into the skin and cause dryness, irritation, and disrupt the skin barrier function, and can also aggravate things like acne and eczema. Um, so originally, you know, micellar waters really gained popularity in France because of hard water, as in looking for a cleansing product that didn't require rinsing off. And the surfactants in micellar waters are very mild. They are typically cationic, quaternary, uh, ammonium compounds. I know that sounds like a complicated thing. Uh, these are the type of surfactants that you actually can often find in hair conditioners. An example of one of these gentle surfactants is cetrimonium bromide. A lot of micellar waters also will have polysorbate 20 in them, which is a very mild, non-foaming cleanser. So I mentioned that these gain popularity in France in an effort to not have to rinse the skin with hard water. And so that was kind of one of the first enticing aspects of these. Micellar waters also claim certain benefits that they are much milder than a regular cleanser and that they are hydrating. This has actually been shown. Um, micellar waters can improve skin hydration because they have things like glycerin in them that act as humectants. And if you look at the instructions on most micellar waters, they'll tell you to wipe them on your face uh, and wipe off the residue with like a cloth. But really, I have to tell you guys, you absolutely should rinse off the micellar water. Why? Well, micellar waters leave behind a residue on the skin that can lead to a lot of irritation in people, not only people with sensitive skin, but really anyone. They're leaving behind a residue of a surfactant, and albeit that surfactant is mild, but with prolonged contact on the skin and left behind on the skin, it can cause a lot of irritation. The other issue with micellar waters is that the cleanser action of it is so mild that it really doesn't adequately remove dirt, oil, and cosmetics. So the downsides of micellar waters in my mind and why I'm not really into using them is that they're inadequate as cleansers um, and they do in fact need to be rinsed off, which is kind of what people were uh, you know, presumably trying to escape from the get-go, the need to rinse these off. It doesn't all come off just by wiping your face. You still need to rinse the skin. Now, if you live in an area with hard water, things that you can do to help uh, get around the hard water issues would be adding a water softener to your shower head and making sure that you bathe or cleanse in cool water. The hotter the water, the more likely the calcium from the hard water is gonna leach deeper into your skin and cause negative 
effects on, on your skin and skin barrier. So the best tips for dealing with hard water are, you know, to try getting a water softener and to take short, cool showers or, you know, when it comes to washing your face, make sure you're rinsing with cool water. Um, but anyways, what I'm, I'm getting at is that the micellar water does not set you free of the need to expose your skin to water. The other issue I have with micellar waters is that they don't adequately uh, cleanse the skin. Yes, they can help in breaking up makeup and removing makeup, but they really don't adequately remove impurities from the surface of the skin. And therefore, you, I recommend people do a double cleanse when using a micellar water, meaning they use a the micellar water first and then they follow it up with a gentle cleanser. So, you know, a lot of people may be interested in choosing a micellar water thinking that it will be gentler than a cleanser, but in reality, you still need to follow it up with a cleanser to adequately cleanse your skin. Washing your face with just micellar water or just using micellar water to wash your face is the equivalent of co-washing exclusively, meaning if you're not familiar, co-washing is the idea that you can use conditioner instead of shampoo to cleanse your hair. And it's fine to do that here and there a few days a week, but if you exclusively use conditioner to cleanse your hair and scalp, the surfactants are too mild. And it does not adequately remove dirt, sebum, oil from the scalp. And people who uh, exclusively co-wash can run into a really bad problem with buildup on the hair shaft. So, you know, a lot of people with more textured hair do a lot of co-washing, but it's really important that they also incorporate some degree of shampooing, at least on a once a week basis, to really remove that buildup. Same thing with using a micellar water. It's like the equivalent of co-washing. You're not really adequately removing dirt, oil, and importantly, pollutants uh, from the surface of the skin. We, we're exposed to a lot of pollutants in our environment, and cleansing is one way to help remove those. And uh, if that's left behind on the skin, it can generate free radicals that lead to inflammation and age the skin. So in my opinion, micellar waters, a lot of their presumed benefits are lost. They're not I mean, maybe they're gentler than a cleanser, but you still need to use a cleanser. Maybe they, uh, you know, are gentler and softer than hard water, but you still need water to rinse them off. The other advantage though of micellar water, as I alluded to, is that it's got hydrating ingredients like glycerin. And there's actually a study that showed that uh, micellar water improves the moisture content of the skin, that, and that improvement lasts four hours. And they compared it to using my preferred method, a cleansing oil. Cleansing oils improve moisture content in the skin, but that only lasted two hours. So it suggests that maybe micellar waters are slightly better. However, I have reservations with that because remember, with the micellar water, you're leaving behind a mild surfactant on the surface of the skin, plus, I mean, assuming you don't rinse it off, plus you're leaving behind um, the makeup dirt residue. And so I think if you just use the micellar water, that improvement in moisture content in the skin that was shown out to four hours, I think that would be lost and you would, you know, you're more at risk for irritation. So that's another reason why I don't, I'm not really into the micellar waters. In summary though, it's fine to use a micellar water, but I do recommend using it as a first step in a double cleanse, meaning you use the micellar water to kind of break up the film of cosmetics, dirt, what have you, and then you follow it up with a gentle cleanser. If you live in an area with hard water, make sure that the water is at a cool temperature because the hotter the water, the more likely the calcium and things in the hard water are gonna cause problems for your skin. And try to not spend too much time either in the shower or you know, exposing your skin to that water, try to just keep it to a short rinse time. The other reason it's so important to follow your micellar water with a gentle cleanser is because as I said, um, the micellar water is gonna leave behind a residue on the skin plus the mild surfactant. And not only can that cause, you know, obviously irritation for the skin of anyone, but it's also, it, it also will impact the penetration of active ingredients. So, you know, we wash our face at the end of the day and, if you're gonna be using skincare products on top of that, you know, you're putting them on top of something 
an irritating residue. So if you used a product that you felt broke you out, one reason for that might be inadequate cleansing. If you exclusively relied on just a micellar water to cleanse your skin, um, you know, part of, part of the irritation that you might have developed from said product may have been due to the fact that you put it on top of basically dirty skin with a film of mild surfactant on it, causing an increased risk of irritation and problems. Now, you guys know my preferred method of cleansing for me personally is to use a cleansing oil or a cleansing balm as a first step to break up the film of water-resistant sunscreen, cosmetics, and whatnot. And then I follow it up with a gentle cleanser. So I do a double cleanse too. My method doesn't you know, isn't actually too, too different from doing a double cleanse with micellar water. Uh, you know, I think if I didn't follow it up, if you don't follow it up with a gentle cleanser, you still can run the risk potentially of leaving behind an irritating residue. Like a micellar water, a cleansing oil or a cleansing balm is, as a first step, very gentle for sensitive skin types. It's not irritating. And the emollients help soften dry skin. And there is evidence that using a cleansing oil or cleansing balm does improve the moisture content of the skin, similar to a micellar water, although maybe not for as long a duration of time after use. <laughs> so why do I use a cleansing oil instead of a micellar water? In my experience, it just works better for me. It just works better at getting off my um, mascara. I use them around my eyes and, and breaking up the film of water-resistant sunscreen. The other advantage in my mind to using a cleansing oil or cleansing balm over a micellar water is that it's easier to apply it with just your hands. Whereas a micellar water, you kind of need a cotton pad or something. And so I like that, less stuff that you have to use. So that's another reason why I prefer cleansing oil, cleansing balm. And for me, a lot of micellar waters burn around my eyes. You know, I don't wear makeup but I do wear mascara and I like to use something that's going to dissolve the mascara off of my eyelashes gently. And I find with the micellar waters, they always run into my eyes and cause burning and stinging. Similar to an eye makeup remover, I honestly don't know how people who wear makeup tolerate eye makeup removers at all. Um, so I prefer to use a cleansing oil or cleansing balm or to break up my mascara and, and whatnot. I find it's easier to keep it out of my actual eyes and then it rinses off very easily with a gentle cleanser. But which is better as a first up micellar water versus cleansing oil i have zero data to offer you guys to answer that question i think it's a matter of personal preference but i do think it's important that you follow it up with a gentle cleanser to remove the residue whichever method you choose as your first step i think it's really important to follow it up with a gentle cleanser and you may be wondering well why do all this double cleanse stuff why not just skip straight to the second step and use the gentle cleanser Using a gentle cleanser, for most people, might be just enough, especially if you don't wear makeup and you've just been wearing a sunscreen that's not water resistant. But um, there is a study that showed that using an oil cleanser is superior for removing uh, water resist, or suggests, I don't wanna overemphasize it, suggests that an oil cleanser is a better way to remove water resistant sunscreen because it kind of helps break up that film. Um, so for me, I find that it requires a shorter contact time with the cleanser if I use uh, oil cleanser first. And that shorter contact time with the gentle cleanser ultimately reduces the irritation to the skin barrier. The longer you have contact with surfactant, the greater the risk of irritation. And then the second step with the gentle cleanser it's easier for the gentle cleanser to remove that stuff. And that's a lot of that, to be frank, is my own personal anecdotal experience. Uh, but again, it's not like I have a study seriously looking at, uh, you know, on a microscopic level at the skin, residue left behind, comparing micellar water second step cleanse versus cleansing oil second step cleanse. I don't. It's really a matter of personal preference at the end of the day, which type of product that you choose. It is really important that you cleanse the skin at least once a day, ideally in the evening, because again, you've been exposed to environmental allergens and pollutants all day. You need to make an effort to remove that with cleansing. Now, what do I mean by a gentle cleanser? That's kind of a vague term. Most cleansers claim to be gentle, I would say this tends to be more important, especially for people who have dry, sensitive skin. Gentle cleansers tend to not foam. That's a quick and easy way to recognize them. 
Um, and they tend to have a, a more acidic pH than foaming cleansers. Foaming cleansers are a fine option, uh, but they tend to be more drying and stripping. Now, for people with really oily skin, they're like, bring it on. They can tolerate that just fine. Um, so beyond looking to the gentleness of your cleanser, it's kind of more which one actually works well for you and doesn't cause too much irritation. And that's gonna depend on your skin type. If you're oily, you may get along well with a foaming cleanser. Whereas if you have um, more sensitive, very dry skin, you may gravitate towards a cream-based cleanser or a gel-based cleanser. In my experience also, using those more mild cream or gel cleansers as a sole step, like as a single step, they really don't, they really don't cleanse the skin very well at all. I find they only work if they come after an oil-based cleansing step or you know, a micellar water-based cleansing step if you're wanting to go that route. So I haven't had much success personally using micellar waters, but they certainly are a fine option. I, you know, Again, I think they should be used as a first step in a double cleanse. Micellar waters that I have used and didn't think were horrible, actually the only one is the Bioderma Cincy Bio Micellar Water. That one is very nice. It has cucumber water, which is very hydrating. I think it also has um, polysorbate 20 in it, a non-foaming um, cleanser. And it's very nice, but you do need to rinse it off. I did try the CeraVe micellar water. I reviewed it for you guys a while ago, and that burned around my eyes to no avail. And I've also tried the Garnier um, micellar water, uh, Garnier, fruit, no, not fruit tea, so that's a shampoo, Garnier micellar water. Uh, I've tried that and didn't have very good results with that either. I saw Drunk Elephant came out with a micellar water. It actually looks promising. Comment below and if you've used it. It has ceramides in it, which are good for your skin barrier. It has a variety of moisturizing ingredients. Um, so I, you know, maybe I should give that a try. I don't know. Um, I'm happy using cleansing balms and cleansing oil or cleansing oils as my first step though. So I don't know that I would necessarily pursue that, but it does look promising. So share below on if, if you guys have used that. Um, I hope this video was helpful to you all. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.